episode of the Canadian Watch Monkey. And guess what? Got an announcement to make. If you remember back uh, about a month ago or so, or maybe a little longer than that, I was on the search for a rectangular watch. <clears throat> and uh, there were a few brands I was looking at. Hamilton was one. Uh, but the two front runners was the uh, Longines Dolce Vita. And the other front runner was the, what they're calling the Oris Rectangular. And uh, both are, are really great watches. And uh, I wasn't really looking at the Cartier tank. It's just, I didn't want to spend that kind of money on a rectangular watch. Um, anyways, I, as was mentioned in the previous video, and I will leave a link to that so you can check how I came to the decision that I did. Uh, I went to the local AD and checked out firsthand uh, the watches that were in stock. Now they had the Longines Dolce Vita, but in the larger size. And I tried it on and immediately knew, no, this is not good. Uh, it almost reminded me a little bit of uh, an Invicta. It was that big on my wrist and uh, compared to what I thought it should be, being a, a kind of a dress watch, I guess. But anyway, uh, I wound up making the purchase and I'm not gonna tell you what that is until I flip the camera around, but you guys try and think what it was. Was it the Dolce Vita? by Longines, or was it the Oris Rectangular? Um, again, both are really great watches. Uh, I've got a lot of detailed information on both of them uh, in the previous video, as I said. But anyway, I'm gonna flip the camera around now so you guys can see the watch that I picked, and I will tell you why. All right, so let's flip it around. All right, now that we got the camera flipped around, let's take a look at uh, what I wound up purchasing. Um, oh, before I do that, let's do a quick wristwatch check. Now, this is my only other rectangular watch you're about to see here, and it's legendary, all right? So here you go. Whoa, <laughs> this is the Invicta Lupa. If you guys aren't familiar with this watch, it's actually pretty cool. It's a very large watch though, obviously and uh, it dominates my seven inch wrist. But uh, surprisingly comfortable. You know what, I'm just gonna do a close up of this. So again, keep in mind, this is my only other rectangular watch. The watch that I purchased is considerably different than this. I'll zoom in a little bit so you guys can get it in all its glory. And uh, yeah, it's definitely a little bit of a funky monkey for sure, and this isn't for everybody. But you can see there, there's a the model number there. But if you search up Invicta Lupa, They've got different models in that. This is the, obviously, it's the chronograph. And uh, yeah, I just, you know, you hit that button there and you can see it starts ticking away. And then to re to stop it, you press that button and you hit the reset and you can see that goes right around. And you know what? Um, I, I got this really cheap. It was a guy that just wanted to get rid of it. And I, I think I paid like $50 or $75 for it. <clears throat> Apparently they're worth a couple hundred dollars anyways, at least. And it's a, a Swiss uh, Ronda movement in here. That's a quartz movement. And uh, a ah, fun little watch. But yeah, you can see it's uh, definitely not for the faint of heart. And uh, But yeah, I just thought I'd show you that. But that's not the watch that I had just purchased. I've had this for a couple years now. Um, and uh, yeah, there you go. If you guys don't know who those guys are, that's from the band The Gorillas. And uh, they're a pretty cool band if you haven't heard of them. All right, anyway, back to why we're here. Here's the watch that I purchased. And yes, it was the Longines that won the show. Now, a big shout out goes to Stefan, who is a member of Random Rob's Discord group. And uh, he had purchased it in that group. And uh, he kept it for a while. And I guess he didn't bond with it. And he gave me a great deal on it. A uh, really good deal, and this is part of the reason why I purchased it too. And uh, it's very rare that I buy a watch brand new. It's just, 
you know, I, the, my turnover of watches is pretty high and uh, I don't like to lose a lot of money with the watch purchases when I buy and sell. But anyway, here it is. And boy, is it a stunner. Uh, let me pull this out. It's a full kit. It came with the original receipt and everything. And uh, you can see there, it, it's a really great looking watch. And uh, this is the smaller version too, uh, automatic, of course. I'll pop this off the cushion for you guys and you can take a little bit closer look. So there it is there. And it's very uh, uh, um, Cartier tank reminiscent. It looks a lot like it. I'm just gonna zoom in a little closer. And this has got some really nice details. I really like the fact that it's got a date there at the uh, six o'clock position. And uh, it's running a Swiss ETA movement. Uh, but I think it's uh, proprietary to uh, Longines, this particular one. And uh, you can see there, it's got a few little marks here. This is all just hairline scratches. It really shows up on the camera. With the naked eye, you hardly notice. But trust me, I could polish that out in probably about 10, 15 minutes. I could get this watch looking as new. And uh, just let you take a close look. And uh, those hands, I don't know if it shows on the camera. Let me try to get some more light on it. It's actually blued. Yeah, you're not gonna really see that, are you? But yeah, what a great looking watch. There's the back of it there. And you can see the model number, Longines, serial number. And uh, I can't tell you enough how much I like this watch. Now in a rectangular watch, size really does make a difference. And this is the men's uh, version in the smaller size. Now I'm just gonna throw this on my seven inches. Let me back out the camera for you guys so you can see what it looks like. And uh, this fits so much nicer than the larger one. Now, unfortunately, I didn't get a chance to look at the Oris rectangular, but um, at the price I got this for, I just, there was no need to. Uh, and after I seen the watch, it's just like, wow, what a great looking watch and how it fits. And believe it or not, you guys, you can dress this thing up or down. Uh, I threw this on a NATO strap and believe it or not, it looked really good. And uh, unfortunately, or whatever, the, the lug width here is 19, which is kind of odd, but a 20, um, 20 millimeter uh, NATO strap will fit in there comfortably, especially if it's a little bit stretchy, like the uh, Blue Shark pajama straps. Those things are awesome, by the way. I, I have done a review on that before too, but you can see how nicely this watch really wears. And uh, I think that's just the absolute perfect size. And really, um, bang for buck, you just can't go wrong. I'll let you guys know how much I paid for this. I, uh, Stefan sold it to me for $700 Canadian, shipped to my door, which was a bargain. Now I'm gonna show you the original tags that it came with. So here's one of the tags here. And it's just saying Longines World Service five-year um, um, SI balance spring magnetic resistance warranty. So you get a nice long warranty with it. Longines make great product. And here's the hang tag, all right? It came like this. And there's a suggested retail price of 1,575 US dollars. So that's not Canadian, that's US dollars. So that's uh, a little over two grand uh, Canadian. And we'll pull that out. So if you want to know the model number of this particular watch, I'll zoom in a little bit for you guys too. There it is there, okay? I should have cut my fingernails, but uh, I didn't even realize how bad they look. Sorry about that, guys. But anyway, there it is there. The serial number is up top, uh, at the bottom, sorry, and the model number is at the top there. And uh, yeah, for, for the 700 Canadian, that was a no-brainer. I jumped all over it. And uh, what a great deal. But what a great watch. Um, I, I recommend this watch highly, especially if you're looking for a rectangular. Uh, it's really my, my second, but really first rectangular. The other one I just bought because it was such a good deal. But take a good look at that again. Like comes with a nice blue strap, uh, leather. I don't think that's real crocodile, um, but uh, it looks really nice. And like I said, it looks great on a NATO as well. Uh, or just about anything you throw on it. With being a white dial like that, you can match it up with anything. 
So again, I'll just do some close-ups for you guys so you can enjoy how nice looking this watch really is. I'm going to get up nice and close for you. So there you go. And of course, it's sapphire crystal. It's automatic. Uh, you can hand wind it. Uh, and of course, it hacks as well just by pulling out this. And the date set is there, uh, is here as well. So you just turn it and it will change the date. And uh, you can see it hacks. So you just push that back in, the watch will start. Now, the one thing uh, people have mentioned too, hand winding this watch is kind of tough because there's no knurling on here. It's just kind of smooth. And yeah, that would be a little of a bear if you had to wind it all the time. You can do it. You got to get a hard grip and make sure your hands aren't greasy at all. But I can I can still do it. So it's not, it's not impossible, that's for sure. But uh, it's not very grippy at all. So that's the only gripe, I guess. But you know what? It's a reasonable sacrifice to make to give that sleek, sleek look. And you can see there it's branded as well on the crown, of course. I'll just zoom in again for you guys. So you can see that. And I don't know if you can actually read that or not. But yeah, uh, I really, really, really like this watch. And this is going to stay around for a very long time, probably permanently. But if you're looking for a rectangular watch, guys, really, I strongly recommend the Dolce Vita in the smaller size. The bigger size is just too big for my 7-inch wrist. For a dress watch, it doesn't look right. Now, I'll put this next to the Invicta, and you can see the Invicta really looks like King Kong compared to this. But, <clears throat> again... You know, take a look at the quality. The leather straps that the Longines come with are great. Again, there you can see the 19. A little bit of an odd strap choice, but most of the times you can squeeze in a 20 there without too much difficulty. And, uh, yeah. So tell me what you guys think. Uh, did I make the right choice? Actually, um, I can tell you I, de I definitely did. But um, if you have the Oris uh, Rectangular, I'd be curious to hear your thoughts on it, if you're pleased with your purchase and that. It was a serious consideration, but there were just none around, and I wasn't willing to pay almost two thousand dollars to uh, an AD for for one. I'm sure if you looked around, you could get it get a discount, but uh, this one just happened to come my way as I was on the search for the rectangular uh, type watch, and this is a big thumbs up in my eyes. This is a definite winner. So if you haven't already done so, I'm going to ask you guys again, please like and sub to my channel. Your support is greatly appreciated. And uh, my next episode, I'm probably going to be doing a review on something a little bit different. I've got the, a uh, Seiko SKX uh, versus a Citizen NY2300 uh, going head to head. But anyway, that's the Longines Dolce Vita. Big thumbs up of approval from the Canadian Watch Monkey. If you guys got any questions or anything, I'm always happy to answer. I go through the uh, your questions and remarks. And uh, yeah, thank you guys for your support. Uh, if I don't hear from you guys uh, before Christmas, have a Merry Christmas. But I think you will. I hope you do. Take care. That's it for today's episode. The Canadian Watch Monkey.